tomorrow's trucks might have rice. We must decide what we're going to do. Please, Mum, not this again. Listen, our lives back home are finished, at least for now. This is war, and this is the way it always is. We can't settle in this country. If we learn the language, learn their way of doing things. Stop being who I am. I don't want to change. We trust in our God, that's how we'll remain ourselves. It's been happening for centuries. Remember the story I used to tell you about Daniel? Maybe. What about it? The Babylonian Empire captured their city, Jerusalem, remember? Their temple was burnt. Their holy objects stolen. Their families murdered. Oh! Daniel's people were marched out of their homes. One day, everything was normal, like we used to be. The next, there were slaves, refugees. They found themselves in Babylon, the greatest city the world had ever known, just another captive tribe in a city fueled by captives. But for the Israelite leaders, the Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar had special work in mind. Your Majesty, the Israelite princes. They tell me you are the finest men to be found amongst your people. I am going to have you trained up. You shall work for me as Magi. You will advise me, govern the provinces, foretell the future, interpret sacrifices to the gods. Hey, Lord Magus. Your Majesty, we cannot serve your gods. If your rituals demand that we Daniel. perform... Daniel. We usually allow three years to train a Magus. If you are not adequate by then... How can we work alongside these gods? Look, Daniel. Look out there. Look at our people. We must accept this, use it to do what we can for them. I can learn the skills of a Magus, but if they ask me to deny the Lord God, to break his laws, I cannot. Belshazzar, my son, take them to their quarters. Make sure they're comfortable. This way, Israelites. The months passed, and the Israelites learned their new skills. And with skill, they earned protection for their people and the friendship of the Prince Royal, Belshazzar. And this one god, he does everything. He protects us. One god is all a man needs. And he never loses his temper with you. If we obey his laws, he is our fortress. Does he reveal the future for you? If that's what's required, but it's not important. As long as he is obeyed, the future will be safe. My lords, my lords, the king has spoken. An honor, such an honor. You must have truly impressed his majesty. Yes, Ashpenaz? You are to share the meat from the king's table. It comes straight from the temple of Marduk. Only the most honored share the king's meat. It's been part of a sacrifice. That's why it's so holy. We cannot accept it. What? We cannot eat meat offered to another god. Tainted by his ritual. No reasonable god would ask you to refuse this honor. Daniel, if we refuse, we will suffer. And everything we've gained for our people will be lost. We cannot eat the meat. We must stand together. There's no other food for me to give you. And when you get sick, I will be punished. You will not tell the king. I can't do it. Allow us time to show you. We will be none the worse for it. Ashpenaz did what he could. The Israelites had to survive on water and little else. Daniel and the others prayed that their obedience to the laws of the Lord God would not go unrewarded and that the king would not realize the sacred meat had gone untouched. I want to see how your studies are coming along. I hear good things, don't I, Lord Magus? You're looking very well, I must say. The temple meat obviously suits you. And your work, show me. Astrological charts, Your Majesty. Most impressive. 
Most impressive. Wouldn't you say? Adequate. What about those treasury figures? The calculations, Majesty? Very good. Very good. I can't see any point in training you anymore. Your Majesty, there's surely still I appoint you all full kings, Magi. Get them their proper robes, Ashpenaz. They'll be teaching you soon, Lord Magus. Don't think you can get the better of me. Daniel knew that the Chief Magus would always be an enemy. But he had no choice other than to go on working and learning if his people were to be safe. He learned to administer their empire, and he learned to interpret their dreams. <laughs> Magus! Magus! Call my Magus! Majesty! dream. I have had it the last three nights. Tell me what it means. Of course, Your Majesty. Relate your dream and I shall interpret. First, you must tell me the dream. Majesty? How do I know you really have these powers? Any of you? Come on! Majesty, no mortal can know another's dream. None of Are us... Are you will. denying me? But, Majesty... Do not refuse me! God, have all the Magi executed immediately! Throughout the palace, every Magus was arrested, including the Israelites. In their cell, they prayed. And just before dawn, the hour set for the executions. Your Majesty... One of the Magi insists he knows your dream. The Israelite Magus. Let's hear it then. You watched. You saw a huge tree, tall, still growing, strong, vibrant, topmost branches touching the clouds. It fed everyone, more than enough for everyone. And it shaded and sheltered the animals gave a home to the birds, and this tree, Your Majesty, is you, providing for all the people of the earth. Then, a watcher, a holy watcher, came down from heaven, and he cried, chop it down. The animals must run, the birds fly. You have risen too high, Your Majesty, and the Lord God must bring you down. But the watcher also said, leave the stump in the ground, bind him with iron rings, he can live in the rain with the beasts of the fields. No longer human, he will have the mind of a beast for seven years. Your Majesty will live like an animal in a field. But there is hope. The Watcher allowed the stump to live, did not uproot it. And when you come to acknowledge the only Lord God after those seven years, you will be restored to humanity. Shall I cut him down now, Your Majesty? <laughs> I have never heard anything quite so preposterous. I knew you were different, Israelite. You are very special. <laughs> <laughs> Who could possibly have such an absurd dream? No. The dream was exactly as he said. And for that reason, you shall all be saved. But the interpretation... Ah, too ridiculous for words, really. Look at his majesty. Has he turned into an animal? Has he grown horns? It is not known when this might happen. I think I'd like to get some sleep now. A year passed. The king remained unchanged, but Daniel said nothing. He knew the word of the Lord God was true, and the dream would be fulfilled one day. The stump was your enemies, Your Majesty. 
You will bind them with iron, send them out into the fields to live like animals. Israelite? <laughs> Aren't I supposed to be a donkey now? Or was it a giraffe? Hmm? Or a crocodile? <laughs> I am only a voice for the Lord God. Look, Israelite, look at my city. Why should I become an animal? Look at the gardens, the temples, the buildings, the marketplaces, the courts. I built this city. I built Babylon. As did a million captive slaves, including my people. No, Israelite, I built it. Only I built Babylon, the greatest city the world has seen. And it's my city, built by my hands. What's happening to me? I am looking. Out of the way. What's happening? I am King Nebuchadnezzar. Your Majesty. King of Babylon. King of. Your Majesty. Be calm. Remember, with faith, you can come to the Lord God and be restored. The Israelite seems to think his God might help your father to recover, to be king again. Your God has nothing to offer us, Israelite. We were once friends. Be grateful to keep your life. Your Majesty. What happened? Even when Nebuchadnezzar was restored, Belshazzar remained on the throne in Babylon. Not that he learned the lesson of his father's pride. 